I'm actually going to hand it over to Chris. Welcome. I'm privileged to talk today about entrepreneurship. The key thing is the subject you probably know well. So my purpose for today's presentation, it's probably maybe share extra insights. If you find maybe one or two things you didn't know about or you instill your knowledge or you'll be a little bit more familiar with, I already achieved my goal. For me, it's very important that you find or try to look for entrepreneurship from a little bit different perspective than normally you learn in college. Uh, I personally was involved in uh, many different business ventures in, in Ireland from small business ventures that were importing products from Brazil to business ventures in relation to services. And I'm happy to share certain experiences from, uh, from that time that you might find it useful. And maybe the mistakes that uh, you can avoid. And I think that's one of the most precious things. Of course, some mistakes, uh, as famous singer George Michael said, are built to last. Some mistakes, it's really hard to avoid. And maybe it's better because the insights and perspective will be on much deeper level. And that is actually from my personal experience. I'm also a sales trainer and career strategist. So I work with entrepreneurs on from one side on their mindset, and I work on sales development, influencing and, and pers persuasion. On the other side, I work with lots of business coaches, coaches that actually support uh, entrepreneurs in their journey, starting from the beginning. What I've learned also before we start, a few simple rules. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, write it down. Write it down at the end of the sessions. I'm really happy, I love questions, to address any if I can answer, of course. Another thing I would like to share with you, there will be a presentation and uh, within this presentation, I will share certain points of view. And remember, it's not a comprehensive view on entrepreneurship. It's just a chosen subjects that I think might be quite useful to you. Guys, I tried to make it short because, you know, as you probably know from our attention span is 20 minutes. So every 20 minutes, we need certain reset. If you have questions, it's important to write it down very famous expert, David Allen said, if he sees on the meeting, professional meeting, someone who is committing to something and not writing it down for him is a warning sign. And uh, his famous getting things done system is very much used entrepreneur. So if there is a something, some thoughts, some idea, make sure you get this small habit of writing it down. So let's dive in. You probably know what's entrepreneurship. I just want to highlight a few small things. It has to be an ability and readiness because it's not only to be able to do things, but also to be mentally ready. And I cannot emphasize that most of the startups, most of the ventures fail on the level of being not only able, but being ready mentally to take that big venture. I'll talk in more details during the slides and steps we're going to talk about. So you need to organize and you need to be ready for those uncertainties because one of the things of the business venture is definitely getting the profit. So look at entrepreneurship like a great adventure. And that mindset helps you to deal with those difficult situations we we're talking about. One of my favorite businesses is, is LinkedIn. And this is amazing how the colleagues you are within the class, they can be already your team in your new venture and creating and developing an idea as Wright Hoffman found a few friends from PayPal social net. And now LinkedIn is one of the key players in relation to social media and professional media. And another thing we need to remember that even though at the beginning there was just 20 signups a day, it was enough at some time to attract external investment. And we know now LinkedIn is one of the biggest and the most amazing businesses. Now, now I'll talk to you about a few steps. Find your why. I don't know which, what this sentence is telling you, but there is a very famous guy called Simon Sinek. 
it's like a guru in leadership and actually he's inspiration for lots of future skills program i do at the moment and why is it important because entrepreneurship is very exciting at the beginning it's something that adventure we want to start we have a passion but after a year or two when you see the profit is not rising when you see there's a tough moment you need an energy and motivation to keep you going so you need to have your deep why simon sinek wrote a beautiful book not only start with why but find your why so i really um advise you to look at that book to making sure that you go through that process and he shows for professionals and also entrepreneurs and companies so you can find the company why your why and also if you want to become a sole entrepreneur passion chris kibelo say not always uh, make sure that if you have this passion you can connect to what people want because if we uh, earn on any passion we have everybody will be rich probably by now the key thing is we want to make sure that we connect this want and the drive together now i'm very much involved in one of the projects big projects i do is this future skills and this is a new focus a new era in universities and companies and simon sinek uh, clearly states that companies needs to involve in those skills those mindsets of people the future of the workforce and also entrepreneurship lies in those steps and this is the area that i focus on because we need to answer a question am i ready emotionally and physically to start this business venture that's very important to answer before you actually start doing it now am i ready financially this is a very good question because or you start a service or you start business by selling and offering products and that's two different approaches you need to take for consideration what's the worst case scenario so let's say my business will not work out all my money will be gone and you need to answer yourself can i go back to live with my parents and work or get a job in the meantime to start things all over again because entrepreneurship is a long term strategy it's not one project done and that's it it's something that you get up and you pursue it again and again and again but each time you learn much more and are your family and friends ready from a point of view if you tell them that you're going to engage in this entrepreneurship project maybe there were late nights that you need to spend on it maybe you're not able to be as social as you were before something that you need to take for consideration uber what can be a great inspiration for a business a complain if you complain about something you make sure you look for ideas in anything that happens around you and those this complaint was a great inspiration for them to create a business which now is available and flourishing especially in america now startup of course has its challenges and if we can we try to identify the pitfalls making sure that we also can have plan b and c and that's not only from starting the business but also if you go to the business meetings talking to your partners when you're engaged in a key conversation or deals especially at the start of your business assess your own weaknesses and start with why i can help you business coaches can help you with that and remember what i've learned myself is business is only succeeding when you have a team that's very important you're not alone alone is really hard we have Steve Jobs we're going to talk about him here later on in the presentation he said how vital is company to have a team and the right culture so having assess your own weaknesses you know what to work on you know that you need a team player that can compensate your weaknesses now start sometimes especially at the beginning it might cost you a few nights out if you decide to start your business as something aside of your work because you need to have that 
injection of cash. You need to have that security of making sure that there is a flow that whenever happened, you still have money to keep going. However, if you have a great capital, a different situation. If you have investments and the cash flow in silver is quite high, there's a great cash injection, you can actually leave your work and focus on it. From a psychological point of view, it's very interesting because you need to have your mindset. Your normal job is something temporary and you focus on entrepreneurship. Because what psychologists observe, if we are not fully committed to our business, we have tend to have lots of excuses because I still have a job. So you need to make sure that your mindset is, I'm fully committed to this idea. Now, this is a question to you. And I would like you to think and tell me, how would you like to define a working time? What is a working time for you? Any ideas? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I think if you want to be an entrepreneur, you uh, will always be working. Uh, you will always, you will have no uh, free time because you always have some kind of uh, um, responsibility. responsibility, right? And uh, yeah, you, you have to be there with passion because if you don't have your passion, you will, I think you will burn out. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Uh, don't you think it's a danger that if you be all the time working and uh, that you might actually burn out, there's no time for regeneration? Yeah, but um, it depends. It kind of depends on uh, if you enjoy your work, your work. Uh, because I have been to a lot of workshops uh, who who handled exactly this uh, this this topic, and. Um, I think if you if you um, the thing you do like your job in that case can be seen by yourself as your own free time, then you won't burn out. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. Uh, is there anyone else? Yeah, guys. I think it's especially difficult in the beginning when you're so tired to set your own company or whatever up. Then you have to invest a lot of time. But I think also later like on, it's important that you um, are disciplined enough. Would you be would you talking like self-care so making sure that you're putting time aside where you're actually taking care of yourself when yeah. you're not focused on that okay. absolutely brilliant and i will share with you something that blown my mind the working time is the time that you think about work whether you at work whether you at home whether you travel every time entrepreneur is working when he thinks about ideas when he thinks about working so he noticed that if you want to be or uh, relaxed or you want to have time outside work, as the, the last speaker mentioned, you need to make sure that at this time you're fully with your family, your friends, even if you're a pub with your amigos and you start talking about work, about ideas, you're working again. So this allows you to be aware and measure actually in reality. You're right. You're probably all the time working. So having that level of awareness, am I thinking about work now or I'm not, allows you to control, am I at work or not? Because you, be, you can be with your family, you can be with your friends, but you might be working at the same time. So that is very important to remember and take for consideration. Because... Then when you start your project, first of the things you probably think about, okay, I want to name my startup. You probably know the story about Nike, that the, it was a great inspiration starting from the goddess of victory from ancient Greece. One tip from the music project I had a years ago, uh, I was involved in a music band here with two great lads. And there were two founders, the major founders is me and, and the other guy. And at that time, for example, I was creating the music side, the sounds underlying it. The other uh, co-founder was writing amazing lyrics and melodies to it. So what we said, okay, there are words that define us. 
So written and sound. So we called our band written and sound. That nicely reflects into the logo. Quill is something to write. Note is something about music. So that's it's an idea, a way you can see how you define yourself as an entrepreneur and how that is go along with you and the partners you're dealing with. Uh, Kote, for example, are the first letters of the founders of the business, of the surnames. If we talk about financing, of course, at the beginning, all entrepreneurs want to be like the great stories from the movie, start um, and finance by themselves. But there are a few things to consider. Very often, entrepreneurs forget that there is someone else who done that before. So why not going and checking at least three businesses similar to you and asking for those advices? Seeking the process, especially what process, because you need to adapt this process to your specific situation. Ask for the data. What went right? What went wrong? And advise how to make it easier. That is a great pointer because it saved me in my, especially in my services business, saved me a lot of money and time. Now, you probably are familiar with bootstrapping is a situation when you finance your own business with your own money, with your means. Now, there are tools you can use, make it easier. In USA, like charge cards, it's not a credit card. It's a charge card that extend your tr credit terms, especially when you're in um, product-based business or even sometimes services combined with products like printing business and having that great flexibility really sometimes can say, are you surviving or not? Because cash flow is a king in small business. Now, if we don't venture capital, this is a little bit much complex. Here we have Enterprise Island who support businesses, local offices that also support a small business who trade within the nation. But you need to see that, okay, you give a cash, you get advice, which is very, very important to have at the start, but also you're losing your control in the business. And it's very important to consult a lawyer who will guide you in relation to legal nuances can very often exist when you take someone, some investor, external investor. Now, if you want to be someone who invests in services, a great tip from the $100 startup, start your business in service in one day. You need to just remember about a few things. You need to be specific. So you can start on the side being a student already, a service business. And they, there are a few things you need to remember. Get specific. And this is a mistake I've done. And uh, with time, we be much, much more specific about target audience. And I'll be probably saying about this uh, a few times. Do not underprice yourself because it is a service business. And follow the simple formula. You will find this in this amazing book. How you just fill that in and already gives you a great guidance. And I'm telling you guys, this really works. If you define that specially, define that core benefit, second benefit. And this is a great way to start and you want to develop as an entrepreneur in the future. Now, if we talk about WhatsApp almost failed. WhatsApp 1.0, you probably know version. No one wanted to sign up. No one liked it at the beginning. It's just coincidence that in the same time, Apple upgraded their system, that the user status was visible in WhatsApp. And that's why there was a big turnaround in this whole business. And almost they gave up on, on the idea. But this is sometimes to realize that sticking to your vision, it doesn't mean work straight from the beginning. Now, you probably know how are the relationships within the family. It can go work very well. It can work very badly. And few things to remember. It's great to start with a seed finding, but make sure you also legally document it. Be clear about expectations. The worst case examples, you have to say to your daddy or your mommy, say, you can lose your money. And they need to be okay with that. And, and that's very important. And that's why 
making sure you have that in writing and you keep them updated as much as possible. That is also something to, uh, great to take for consideration. Now, mentors and advisors. Uh, does anyone is familiar with Robert Greene and his books, The Laws of Human Nature? No. No. A great guy who pointed out and spent a lot of time researching, and he said, there's only one shortcut in career development, in entrepreneurship, is to having a great mentor. And I have to tell you, my mentor helped me a lot of my genre. And that is very important to find those mentors. And mentors can be someone really you know already, or friend of a father or uncle, or even a, a friend through your network who already done something and know how to do that. So make sure when you have your business idea, you contact them. Now we have LinkedIn. And now the key thing is to respect their time. Create a simple agenda. Say, I, I want to be conscious of your time. I even created a business networking course on Udemy because it was so important for people I work with to have that guidance and different kind of psychological way to connect with people, to appreciate them and thank them for their time. And at the same time, you get connection, advices, and sometimes a business. Six degree of separation. We are connected to anyone in the world through six degrees uh, from the way we start to the finish. So here's a great example how from actress you can connect to dictator in North Korea. And we can use LinkedIn, no matter who you want to connect and how far they are through your connections and using LinkedIn wisely, you're able to connect with everybody. And business networking and connecting with people are a vital element of your business. If you don't connect with people, your business will not work because you need to give them what they need. People need and they receive things for emotions and you need to change their state. Selling is a problem of changing their state, fulfilling they want. So that is very important to remember. And sometimes don't afraid to ask on social media, what do you need? And talk to your advisors or even partners and showing the weaknesses because that will help you tackle them very, very quickly. Now, a co-founder is like a life partner. Very important that you put attention who are you working with and who you want to be combined for at least a good 10 to 15 years within your business. And what type of person you look for. Make sure if you have certain skills, someone else complement that skills, but they share your vision. And you need to tell others what you really, really need. That is very important. And here's something very useful. Steve Jobs, you probably know in 1997, uh, he gave too much control of his business. And that's why he was forced out. And in that time, everybody thought he's thinking about developing iPod or focusing on iPhone. But in that time, he said, he learned that the lesson that to build enduring a great company is to have the right working people and the right culture. That's why all the businesses are all about culture. Now, a few advices from a guy who starts from zero. In the hard times, in a very hard country like China. I was born in a very uh, normal family and poor family. Six people share seven dollars a month. We can only eat one chicken a year. It was terrible. Nixon visited my city, 1972. China, USA signed, Mao Zedong Nixon signed the agreement. So China become open door. My city, Hangzhou, was one of the first cities that opened to the West. We got a lot of American tourists to visit my city. What he would do is he would befriend foreign visitors who came to Hangzhou to walk around the West Lake there. And I learned English by being the free guide for tour guide. You know, more than the language, Jack was learning about the culture. 
the things I learned from books from China are so different from the things I learned from the American visitors. So I start to think differently. The mindset and the ability to learn and adapt is very important. The story of a guy who was engaged, but then fiance left him three months after. And he bought a ring worth $10,000 and he wanted to return it. And they say, we only pay three and a half thousand. So he was even more depressed about that. And then he started to establish a business. I do, now I don't. And uh, this business helps people who, unfortunately, uh, in those situations had to return their jewelry. But the funny ending and the, the positive ending in that is that he's married now and um, he, he okay. said that any opportunity, anything in life can inspire you to create something that works and support others in their misfortunes or even uh, help them to grow as business professionals. Okay, so I'm trying to bring examples that really open up the things. There is an opportunity in almost anything. Now, marketing, I, lots of, I learned a lot of about marketing from DBS. Uh, I was a student in, in DBS, also as you. I want to emphasize that works for me well, early adopters or super fans or clients that gives you great testimonials. You need that as soon as possible. That social proof that uh, Dr. Cialdini, I, I recommend you a book on persuasion and persuasion from uh, Robert Cialdini. There's nothing more compelling as People like me also bought this and you show and share that. That's very important that the customers see that. So engage with them, uh, support them, give them more possibilities. Like Airbnb example, they have this uh, super host uh, enabled on their platform. Make sure you take care of them straight from the beginning because it has to be win-win relationship for both of you. Now, Another important is create a synergy with other businesses or professionals. When there is a project that you know you won't able to deliver the whole lot, share with others. Share with others that you know will keep the quality. Working together and sharing profit change the way business grows. And you achieve much better if you share. And also create donations or get involved in already existing charities. And this is a great example. Bridget Hilton and Joe Huff, they were selling headphones and they, they created this charity that's focused on hearing aids in Sri Lanka. And the customers, by buying the headphones, said, wow, we're supporting also this amazing cause. Three W's that works for me, for my business very much. And I regret I didn't focus on that at the beginning. Who is the product or service for? You probably know those questions, but it's so important that you ask yourself very often because as entrepreneurs, we jump into process. We become technicians, we work, but we don't think we need to adjust our persona. And this is important to remember. For example, children clothes, not the children are our target audience or the parents. What, what parents? Are the parents of children one to three months, three to five months? That is very important. As more specific you are, as better for you. Where are my customers? Online, Bumble, dating app that started when the owner was looking for their audience and targeting a young college students. And she came to colleges, knocking door to door and teaching them how to use this app. So as you can see, there are different ways to gaining a, a customers for your specific apps and services. When is the best way to approach them? Um, do you know where is the day in America when they sell the most pizza? Anyone has an idea? Super Bowl. Mm, perfect. Exactly. And the pizza companies prepare very well for that. They fight for that day and making sure that the uh, whoever is watching Super Bowl is buying their pizza. Now, 
sometimes we want to overdevelop our service, overdevelop our product. And we need to be ready for change. If something is going wrong, we need to be ready to pivot. First thing is you need to observe your cash flow. When suddenly you see you have less and less cash, that you stop the bleeding, so investing for a specific add-on or specific project, and then assess the problem. It's very important that you get, talk to your customers immediately, check your data, being alert is very, very important. And you continuously check if fix or sometimes stepping away from the project, you need to adapt. Now, starting small, there's a great book called Atomic Habits, amazing process showing how small habits can change your life. And that's so useful for entrepreneurs. And it was very useful for me. How you build your business, also not only customers, but you can win small awards. Make sure that you get as much visibility and credibility as possible. Focus on your business outcomes because sometimes some awards are maybe not useful for you and some associations also not. So it's very important to remember. Now, another uh, crazy idea of the business, this entrepreneur wanted to buy a house, but he wasn't told that someone was, someone died in that house before. So he noticed that there's a great need in the market. People want to know if someone was murdered, killed, or died in the house be before they buy it. And then he created a website that investigates that and shared this information. Another big thing for entrepreneurs, should I focus on social media? Now, can you raise your hand if you're on LinkedIn? Well, so most of you, my colleagues in business, servicing business, that get your clients from Facebook, some on Instagram, some now on TikTok, but some of the businesses get their presence starting from LinkedIn. So you need to identify, of course, where are your clients? If you start, do you have enough budget to make sure you create your content regularly? And this is something I learned and you might find finding useful. It's about outsourcing. Has any of you used any platform to outsource? Uh, which one? Uh, Fiverr. Fiverr could be a great solution. We found it a different type of solution. Talk to your friends. Talk to, you're now studying in Dublin. You have a great connection. Big part of my team is in Mexico. I work with coaches from Mexico who are fluent English, professionals, and you can set up team remotely. And especially when you start your business, you can have a great international team from uh, Malaysia to Mexico, Argentina. And this team, it's more aligned probably with your starting budget because Doing content or having professional with your team is costly. Four Hours Work Week was the book that suggested to hire outsource people from other countries, from India, Canada, or Mexico, for example. Take that for consideration. For us, it was a great, really great move. Make sure you just have the right procedures to get those people on board. Just final few steps. Something that changed the way I see business. This guy, starting from his first book in the 80s, revolutionized how entrepreneurs see the business. When I started the business, I was focusing on the things I'm good at, but that's not the business. That's just technical part of it. He said, you need to create your business straight from the beginning like enterprise. You need to make sure that you have administration, sales, and also anything in relation to business growth. Because you want to, let's say, sell your business in 10, 10 years. You want to create something like franchise. You, you want to create your exit before you begin. And then he said about this turnkey, like you turn the car and it starts working. It's like someone buying your business you st or you go for six months holidays and the business is working even if it's only five or 10 people. Because you create the structure that the business as a whole is continuously working.
And what are the three major elements of that? Entrepreneur. You need to be in 33% entrepreneur. You need to expand your business, connecting people with your vision. You need to be manager, managing others in 30% of your time. And also you need to work on administration, anything in relation to finance. So he said, if you're alone, within the week, make sure you're a manager, technician, or an entrepreneur. Two of you divide the time. And this is so clever because you will never forget about, let's say, doing your finance for three months or submitting your accounts because suddenly you have three days to do that. And this idea and those books are very inspiring. And uh, even our entrepreneurship courses are based on lots of his ideas because he revolutionized the way we see now and we act as entrepreneurs. Now, we want to make sure when we grow the business, it's not always we have enough skills to do that as we have a skills to start the business. And that's a great example of owner of Etsy. He reach, achieved certain level. He didn't know how to scale his business. He stepped down, hired someone who was great in scaling up the business, and then he returned 2011. Sales is my great focus. And sales is about making friends, as Tony Robbins said. Don't forget that. And I actually encourage you, one of the best sales courses I've ever done is Tony Robbins about influence. It's a beautiful 10 steps. As me, Tony Robbins also started from neuro-linguistic programming. And there are lots of systems how to connect with people and creating this lasting connection. And there's so much greatness in it. And one of the things I work with entrepreneurs on is their mindset. And it's so hard for us to understand when you give services and someone is not happy with your service, don't take it personally. That's so important. Your personal worth is not the service you give. You are on the learning path. You're learning. And if you put it too much to yourself, it will bring you down. So having that uh, other people work with you or supporters and having even a great time for social life when you don't think about work or having that advisors will really help your or coaches to not go into this trap, taking things personally. Your business is not you. And that is very, very important to remember. Now, there's a difference between business coaches, mentors, um, who knows the difference? Uh yeah, go ahead. Well, I would say business coaches are paid and you have a personal, you have a personal buy, buy, what is it? You have a personal connection to your mentor. So mm -hmm. your mentor wants you to grow and your coach wants to be paid, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, interesting. And, and, and I, I'll have to say, in a way, it's true um, because you have more personal connections quite often to your mentor, but sometimes mentors are also get paid and coaches also, but they're not like they want to get paid and a professional would like to if there's a jo their job. I agree with you on that. Coaches' success very much is linked to your success. So even if you pay them, um, they want you to succeed because that depends on the reputation that also depends on how many clients they get in the future. The key thing is that mentor is someone who knows exactly the area. So let's say if you're in the area of, uh, let's say, healthcare, selling healthcare products, the mentor was there already. He knows how to do that. He knows the area. And he's an expert in that. Coach, not necessarily. Coach is a well-trained person in asking specific business questions. Some third party checking up on you. You ask to verbalize the problem. And all, very often when they verbalize the problem, they find a solution. So coach is someone who supports you. They are very well trained in asking you the right question and building that skill with you as a young entrepreneur. They're not involved so much in the business, so they can give you this third party and mentors, and they might know certain vendors, they prefer certain ones. 
above the other for personal connections, that can be good and bad. Both can be extremely helpful to your business. Now, uh, do you know the story of KFC? I know there's a lot of text, uh, but there's one thing important in, in that text, that he was 65 years old and he received 1,009 rejections. Can you imagine that? getting 1009 rejections before he succeeded into convincing people about his uh, chicken recipe and now we have kfc all all over the world imagine the level of resilience that person had now there's a small video of one of the my favorite guys called warren buffett and he's talking about jack taylor uh, do you know the car rental company called enterprise Yeah. It's it's one of the biggest companies. The Warren Buffett will explain you where was the success of that company, even if you compete with giants. Henry Ford, as you may know, failed twice before he started the Ford Motor Company in 1903. I mean, the, the test isn't whether you get the greatest business idea in the world the first time out. The test is whether you keep learning as you go along what your strengths are and what you can do for your customers, what you can bring especially to the party. And to do that, uh, you, need, you need the education that, that I know you've received uh, through 10,000 small businesses, but you need a genuine, a genuine desire day in, day out to delight the customer. What goes through their mind? You know, it's the place where they've had a great experience. Um, I don't know what I paid for this type. Actually, probably if somebody gave it to me, but for the purposes of this speech, I will <laughs> say, I, I have no idea, but what I, or the shirt I'm wearing, or this, but I do know, I will remember how I was treated when I bought it. I mean, you, you long forget about the price, but you never forget whether you had a good experience or a poor experience uh, with the purchase experience. And you'll have a hard time finding a person that's had a wonderful experience, a delighted experience in purchasing anything that isn't going to come back. And similarly, uh, if the memory is of rudeness, indifference, you know, whatever it may be, they're never going to come back. And as a small business owner and as you grow, you have to not only be able to project that interest in people's well-being in delighting them yourself, but you have to do it through other people. And you won't be able to do it through people who themselves uh, do not feel they're being fairly treated, that their views aren't, aren't, aren't appropriately considered. So you really do have to learn to multiply yourself uh, through other people. And certainly in terms of your personal life, the most important decision you may make, you'll make is, is the spouse that most of you will likely have and it's very important to surround your people, yourself with people that are the better than you are. You are going to move in the direction of the people you associate with. So you, you constantly. I, I've been enormously lucky in that respect. I mean, I've, uh, I've, I've just had teachers and, and friends and a spouse that really was a better person than I was. And I had enough sense to learn from these people that, that life went better if you behave better yourself. It, uh, uh, it took a while. <laughs> the, uh, uh, so I, I advise you to seek out as your partner in business, your partner in life, whatever it may be, look for the people that actually uh, are examples to you rather than somebody that you need to you think you need to straighten out yourself. And simple rules like that 
delighting customers, working through other people, associating with people that will, will cause you to move in a better path than you might otherwise have. They will take you so far in life that uh, it, it, it's hard to believe. I mean, I'm cheering for you, and I can tell you the best is yet to come. Thank you. <laughs> Although entrepreneurship is a great adventure, the key thing is whether you're selling IT equipment or you're selling services, it's all about people. And uh, as soon as you invest, you or your business partner or your team that creates those great connections and you focus on those great connections as soon as you guarantee success of your business. Guys, here are a few useful resources and books that uh, really helped me in my journey and maybe you'll find them useful. I'm happy to share that list or with CK that she can distribute that. And those authors are, you can find on the bestsellers on Amazon, on all the websites. And we as a company, we had a long way to get there. Now we work with Utah State University, Tech Millennial. We support their students. Uh, we're creating this uh, new future skills. We focus on the growth mindset. We coach them and train them and give them the work experience in relation to whether you want to have entrepreneurship path or you want to combine your future with for example a big huge organization and that's all the 12 steps i mentioned in the beginning and i want to thank you very much for for the opportunity to share a few tips and if you have a specific questions i'm happy to answer um, do you guys have any questions uh, i have one question for you personally what is the best to do when you are at the edge of up. That, that is a very, very good question. Um, there, there are, actually, there are a few things I do. I've used certain technique, and that's a combination of a few things I've learned. It's a book by Napoleon Hill. The key thing is in this book, he talks about a statement that you read every day. And Bob Proctor, in his books and his seminars, make it more even specific. And there are spe special psychological statements. So the statement is, I'm happy and grateful. And then I say for what I'm grateful every morning in relation to me as a professional, me and my family, me and my health. In some kind of way, I program myself in a way, the way I want to go. I don't let life program me by circumstances that comes along or by emotional moments. And whatever it happens, I read that every day and I have in my OneNote. So that helps me a lot. Another thing is you build your vision. There was a great Harvard study that if you really intensify and imagine something very vividly, the brain doesn't see the difference. So you really think, okay, where's your vision? And you think about your vision. Okay, I know where I'm going. And that gives you extra level of confidence, knowing that everything is temporary, whether it's success or failure. It's just a moment. And combining those two elements, a years of programming myself the way I want to go, it's incredible. And I have to tell you that your body, your subconscious is forcing you to react a nice way, the way you programmed yourself. So I encourage you to consciously choose what you want to do. Tony Robbins say, add to it and say, make it an incantation, not affirmation, incantation. So say that with emotions. Neurolinguistic programming say, create your anchors, which is any gesture brings certain emotional state. We have lots of anchors. Imagine you hear a song that reminds you some specific moment. I don't know. You met your first girlfriend or your first boyfriend. And these anchors can be consciously created. So entrepreneurs are, are very much, they're, they're the high level entrepreneurs, very much consciously focus how to manage your emotional state. So those are a few tools that helps me a lot. Uh Thank you very much. So on behalf of CBS, Chris, I do want to say thank you so much. 
um, for coming in and being a guest speaker and obviously dropping those golden nuggets on our students, um, as you always do. And just on behalf of the careers, well, thank you guys so much for attending today. And thank you for being so nice throughout the entire time that he was speaking as well. You guys have great manners, so thank you for that. All right? Thank uh, you. We're going to end it here. I'm just going to say stop. Thank you.